High above Woodward Avenue, with a view that goes on for miles, sits a wooden box, firmly attached to the iconic Detroit Zoo water tower. The box is more than just a shelter or a place for birds to raise their young. It's a symbol of hope and recovery. In the 1950s, peregrine falcons were affected by DDT, a pesticide that was widely used to control insects, especially mosquitoes. The pesticide remains in the environment for a long time, coating plants which are then ingested by animals. The falcons ingested the pesticide as they ate, the toxins building in their system and causing their eggshells to become very thin to the point they would break during incubation. The population declined rapidly. By the early 1960s, the species was extinct in the eastern United States. Peregrine falcons were one of the species to be listed under the Endangered Species Act in 1973. For the next decade, conservationists worked tirelessly to keep the species from going completely extinct. Efforts to reintroduce the birds to urban environments began in 1982, when chicks were released from buildings, bridges, and other man-made structures in locations with an abundance of ample prey, such as pigeons, doves, and starlings. The success of the program led to the removal of the peregrine falcon from the Federal Endangered Species List in 1999. In 2016, a pair of falcons were spotted spending time on the Detroit Zoo water tower. Chris Betcher and Barb Baldinger kept a close eye on the activity and were able to identify the male bird as Justice, a falcon banded in 2012 at the Jackson County Tower Building in Jackson, Michigan. Many falcons are banded around their legs by the DNR after hatching, which helps conservationists track their recovery. The falcons didn't nest that season. But the DZS was already planning the installation of a nest box that fall for the 2017 nesting season. The Detroit Zoo bird staff worked with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources to design and construct a nesting box that would meet the needs of a nesting pair. The resulting box was installed on the southeast side of the water tower to offer protection from the wind while exposing the birds to ample sunshine. Peregrine falcons lay their eggs on dirt or gravel with minimal nesting material so the box has a layer of that material along the bottom. In 2017, four chicks were hatched in the nesting box. The male bird, Justice, from the previous year had returned. The female bird was again unbanded, so it's hard to say if she was the same as the female from the previous year. Three of the four chicks fledged and reached adulthood, which is not unusual for falcon chicks. In 2018, four chicks hatched and fledged in the nesting box, and the father was again Justice. In 2020, five eggs were laid and four hatched out. Thousands of people watched the chicks grow on the Detroit Zoo's live falcon cam, following their steady growth and the variety of prey their parents brought them. When the four chicks fledged, one chick, who was a bit smaller than her siblings, wasn't able to return to the nest. She lacked the muscle strength to make it back up to the nest with her siblings, so the Detroit Zoological Society staff retrieved her, and she spent some time with a local licensed rehabilitator, learning how to fly. In late July, she was released and reunited with her family. So far this year, four eggs have been laid by a new pair of falcons. The female has been identified as Velcro, hatched in 2016 near Toronto, Ontario. The male is not banded, so we don't know any of his history. Once all of the eggs have been laid, the falcons will incubate them, keeping them warm between hunting for prey to feed themselves. We'll be watching closely through the live cam to see their progress. By building a nesting box and monitoring the peregrine falcons who choose to use it, the Detroit Zoological Society is contributing to help this once endangered species reestablish themselves as their essential part of the ecosystem. Peregrine falcons are adaptable and have proven themselves to be exceptional hunters and that they can thrive in urban environments by hunting non-native animals like rodents and small birds. We are so proud to give them a place to call home right here on the iconic Detroit Zoo water tower.